Hey everybody, I'm Scotty J. Welcome back to Rock Titan Live. Gotta tell you something all right now. We have some of the most amazing guests that we have ever had on this show. Uh, one gentleman is known as literally the Quincy Jones of Europe. Uh, he truly is a, a special kind of man, uh, a very rich history in music and just the things he's been through. He's assembled one of the greatest supergroups of musicians that all of you have ever even seen or heard of. And one of the other men that we have on the line right now, someone who I've idolized for quite some time, and I'm dating myself here. He is one of the greatest saxophone players to ever grace the planet Earth. You know and love him from all his years with Supertramp, Mr. John Hollowell. Leslie Mendoki, John Hellowell, how are you guys? Very good. Thank wonderful you. to see you. How Thank you. you. Thank you. Yes, no, it's wonderful to have you again. And, uh, of course, uh, you guys comprise just part of what what is the Mendoki Soulmates, which is just an amazing cast of musicians. And the last time you and I spoke, Leslie, was literally the week you guys were making your debut at Beacon Theater in New York City. I remember very well. It was wonderful. Uh, it was a very special concert, and uh, John and the rest of the gang and myself had a really, really great time. Uh, we enjoyed New York. It's somehow the capital of mankind, and it was uh, good to be there, and, uh, and it was a very warm feeling with the audience of New York. Now, times have changed quite a bit since we last caught up. And, uh, I mean, John, you know, for you especially, I mean, you've been doing amazing things as a musician, you know, since 60s, 70s. Um, and I know you're over there in England right now. Leslie, you're over there in Germany. Have either of you guys ever seen anything like what we're dealing with right now? No, never. Um, I've, I've lived through pandemic. I, I lived through the polio pandemic in the 50s. I've lived through several other pandemics. Not one as bad as this. And it's a, it's a shame that it just kind of stops everything. Well, it doesn't stop everything, but it stops normal gigs. We, we have to rethink. But then, but then Leslie rethought and managed to keep the soulmates together. Right on. Yeah. You know, this is also a chance. So the Chinese are using the same word for crisis and chance. And this is an opportunity to, for fresh new thinking. And John, Ian, and, and everybody in the soulmates, we are idealistic people. We started to uh, do what we're doing as young teenager because we love to play and we were idolists to change the world to be a better place. And now we know that we, the old rebels, uh, put this in, put this in words, um, we see, um, you know, as, as the world is collapsing in a way, uh, at this, at a certain part, because we get out of normal. And, um, and this, uh, especially John is sitting in, uh, uh, in this wonderful island, Great Britain, and I'm sitting in Central Europe, and we see the pictures of New York City for the United States. You know, then, then, then uh, it's my heart is bleeding, and uh, and uh, we see that we have heroes of our days, and uh, these were the nurses, the doctors, the supermarket workers, and um, because John and myself, or Ian and and all, all we are, we are privileged people. We can stay at home. And I only can ask everybody who can stay at home, please stay at home. But we are extremely thankful, if I can speak for the, for the gang, that uh, so many people are taking the risk not to stay at home and serving us. And if they're keeping the world turning, even if it's a little slower or much slower, uh, but, you know, they're, they're running the hospitals and they're running the supermarkets and, and, and giving us the chance to, to, to rethink. And what, what we owe our audience, because the whole our life, we gained so much love, uh, and 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 we were walking on the same side of life, and uh, this is time to give back. That's that's why this, this song we say thank you. We say thank you to the heroes of our days. I love it. Now, am I to understand, Leslie, that your wife is uh, quite the warrior herself? She's a doctor, yes. She's a doctor. She's a frontline worker. She's a first contactor, wow. uh, and and um, you know she, she's sweating in the whole day in this you know special. Uh, gear where what she has to wear and uh, to protect herself and protect us and uh, and she's dealing with a patient uh, affected by the virus wow and uh, and uh, this is we are uh, in a sort of uh, uh, mostly affected area of germany um 
but we are not we are doing still much better than uh, the uh, sisters and brothers and friends in, in England and, yeah. Great Britain, uh, and uh, east uh, towards eastern uh, where the countries are much poorer and uh, don't have that uh, um, relative defensey um, healthcare like we have in Germany um, and um, they were showing us uh, some very simple ways how to take care of this virus and they started the uh, to take action against the virus about six, seven weeks earlier than we did in Central Europe and even two months earlier than England mm. and, and two and a half months earlier than the United States with very simple things, you know, like what we should learn for the future. Um, say, for instance, the Hungarian, in mid of uh, February, they separated the um, uh, population over 60 uh, from the youngers. And so in the supermarket, you were only allowed to go from 9 to 12 only if you were above uh, 60 and after that you were not allowed to go there uh, above 60 so that the, they, they started very early to to to, to protect the elderly uh, part of the um, population and, and this generation who is a more sensitive one um, and so therefore um, in the meantime say for instance Croatia is, is corona free and Hungary is just uh, corona free or Czech Republic or Slovakia is just corona free in the meantime so they're they're this is something to show that that we should take care of each other and we should take care of ourselves and we should take a lesson and, and learn of each other and, and how important is humanity and to help each other and to understand that for, for mutual understanding. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a huge teaching is around now. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And I love how you guys really, as the Menducky soulmates, have embraced all that. Now, one thing, I got to get you into the conversation here, Mr. Hellowell. Um, yeah. We did not have a chance, you know, previously, Leslie, to really talk about, you know, how you kind of identified this cast of iconic musicians. Uh, again, everybody, we have John Hellowell, saxophone player from Supertramp here. Um, John. How how did this uh, how did this meeting between you and Leslie come about, and how did he entice you to become part of the Soulmates? He um, he asked me to come and play on, a, on a, an album he was making, and this was about ten or eleven years ago now. It wasn't the first, it's but it was, um, and he got me down to got a fantastic studio, and he got me down there and uh, got me to play. Obviously, we, we got up not well together, and he said, would you like to do concerts? So, uh, that, was, that was it. And playing with, it's such an honor to play with Leslie. And these great, great musicians that were around, still are around. Um, it's, it's, it's real good. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Now, you know, that being said, with all the other guys, you got Nick Van Eed and you got uh, Bobby Kimball, and I mean, my God, the list goes, uh, Ian Anderson, for God's sakes. Um, holy moly. Um, some of the artists that you've worked with, John, um, I mean, you've worked with guys like uh, Dave Gilmore, one of my favorite musicians of all time. And, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, the other gentlemen from uh, Supertramp, for that matter, you know, uh, Rick and Roger. Uh, was there ever any thought for you, Leslie, to kind of use John's connections and, and maybe incorporate some of these other artists? Had that ever been toyed with? Uh, yeah. Uh, and I've, got, um, I've introduced Leslie to uh, Jimmy Siebenberg, who's a great singer. Okay. He's the son of Bob Siebenberg. Super Tramp drummer, and he's a wonderful musician. And I've also introduced Leslie to Mark Hart, who's, uh, who was a member of the House and Super Tramp at the same time in the 80s and 90s. Um, so that's two really good singers, uh, musicians that I, I've brought, brought to the table. Awesome. Awesome. Now, I, John, while we're on that topic, I know you have a band of your own, you know, where you do a lot of Super Tramp work. Uh, yeah. Big super, uh, what? Super big tramp, super big tramp. So, how have you balanced that project? Now, aside from the coronavirus, you know, because we all know that we are all in quarantine and we've had lockdown and stuff like that. But clearly, you were doing things with the soulmates in tandem with that project. How'd you balance that? Oh, that's all right. I mean, the amount of work is is, uh, is stretching me too much. I would like to do more with those. My big band, but the big band, by the way, it only plays Supertramp uh, tunes. Right. But 
but they're all instrumental and it's all they're all done differently and it's okay. it's a big, big band and then I've also got another special new project with a string quartet and Hammond organ, Frank Ballon. And that's very nice. I've got a CD coming out later this year. Excellent. Excellent. On I play two Supertramp tunes. One's called Ever Open Door, and the other one's called If Everyone Was Listening. Uh -huh. You probably. Yes, yes, but, yes, indeed. Yeah, so um, and the album is called Ever Open Door. Okay. Very cool, yeah. very cool. Now, the big thing we have going on right now, I guess, although I know folks in Europe are already aware of this because it came out back in October, but Living in the Gap is uh, releasing June 12th over here in the United States. Everybody, I'm telling you right now, go out to YouTube, check out Mendoki Soulmates, got the links right here, and uh, you got to see, you got to see what these amazing musicians are doing together. It is unbelievable. I mean, it's like it's like being a chemist. You start mixing all these different things together, and at the end of the day, you have got this amazing concoction of musical greatness. <laughs> Living in the gap. Uh, how excited are you guys for this finally to be released upon the United States? That's great. Um, Leslie will tell you all about it, no doubt. Uh, and I'm very proud to, to be part of it. Awesome. Leslie, please. I mean, you know, this as a dream comes true. I mean, uh, actually, as we were, uh, John and myself, with the whole soulmates, we were um, in, in the hometown of Corey Henry and Eldie Maul and Mike Stern and Randy Bracker and Bill Evans, so in New York City, uh, and played the Beacon. Uh, then actually, you know, I said, okay, I would wish so much in the deep of my heart uh, to reach the American audience with the, with the album what we are going to to, to write and produce. Uh, and this was three years ago, and um, and so uh, this days is going to come true, and I'm so happy about it because um, this album is is was written and produced and played and performed and mixed uh, and mastered against the vision. It has a message, uh, you know, and uh, because. Uh, especially for us Europeans, uh, America means so much. Uh, New York City means so much. And, uh, and, and we, we always want to look up to America. And, and, uh, and um, so it, it, it's so important that we uh, musicians, we say something about uh, the, how much we are against the division and how much we are for uniting uh, all of us, you know, from north to south and uh, east to west and old and young and, and, and the countryside to the city. So that we just we just have to find, uh, uh, again, uh, uh, you know, the binding elements and, and we have to escape from our news bubbles and, and echo chambers and, 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 and get back to humanity. So we, we just have to give up the uh, you know the this this greediness which is was took place in the middle of our societies and just get back to the idol is what made us to be a who we are and this is about this this double album is telling every and each song is like living in the gap and the young rebels and the old rebels um you know you know and uh, so we we are going through and we play through every and each song one of the the burning uh matters of our society and and musically. It's a fantastic when, uh, say for instance, in the title song, Living in the Gap, you hear John's solo starting, and then we break it down, and, and uh, Richard Bona plays on the bass, a wonderful eight bass solo, and Aldi Maola comes in, and, and Corey Henry takes it over from Aldi Maola. So, and this is this, what, what we, we musicians are living for. You know, this is so fantastic because, um, and you know, this is also a kind of uh, magic. I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the older recordings from 2002 um, is, is a song, uh, Last Day of Summer. And everybody wants to play that original eight bar solo. In the meantime, it's a 16 bars. And uh, some time ago, it could have been maybe seven, eight years, John helped me how when it was. And John came up with, uh, after that, Ellie Mola played it, Bill Evans played it, Randy Bracken played it, so Max John played it. So, uh, and and uh, John came up with a clarinet solo. Oh, wow. I mean, this, for me as a composer, as a songwriter, I said, oh, wow. I mean, what a blessing. Uh, uh, you know, uh, and, 
and and then you see then and then Eisen, Ali Mola, or Max Stern, or Randy Bracker, or, and Bill Levinson. Everybody will look at John and say, "Hey, what a blessing! Mm-hmm. Uh, what what a genius way to uh, to translate." So since no one's touching the song, this is John's song. So uh, so this is how a song it works, you know. So that with a great respect, this is a mutual value, and uh, it's just uh, we are burning for music and to to play it right. So good music is important. Right on. Yeah, no, it's funny you talk about John's horn playing because uh, w- w- before you and I had connected, I was actually talking with John a little bit, you know, off the record that uh, his his playing in his song with Supertramp, It's Raining Again, is actually my Uncle Dave's ringtone on his phone, you know, so every time my uncle's phone rings, you know, I, I hear the awesome, you know, sax opening, you know, the whole intro and my uncle would always bust my stones. He's like, when are you going to get Hellowell on, man? I, I thought you were some kind of great journalist, you know, that talked to rock stars. I'm like, well, you know what? I happen to know this guy, all right, Leslie Menducky, and uh, he's he's got, like, this, the, the, the Justice League of America, you know, like the superheroes <laughs> of music that he's assembled. And John happens to be one of them. I think we might be able to do this. So, uh <laughs> Now it's for real. But yeah, no, this is awesome. I mean, John, for you, um, you know, with the rich legacy you've had as a musician, how special has it been to be able to do something totally new? And like what Leslie's talked about, you guys have a very strong message. You're not just entertaining audiences. You're not just making music for yourselves. You guys are actually out there on a mission with a very positive message to to really uh, impact change on people. How special is it for you to be a part of that? It's great. It's pretty great. All Leslie's are a message of some kind or other, but the latest one, the latest one thanking everyone for just amazing. What a great thing. I don't seem to have that facility to, to get that kind of thing together, but I'm really happy to be a part of it. I think, I think I'm really happy to be a side man, which is, you know, that's, that's good. Uh, I think that I come into a situation and, and improvise, and I like that challenge, and just so I can fit in musically with what's going on. So, but it, it's it's a real pleasure. Now, do we get any backing vocals from you? Because I know you have done backing vocals over the years. Do you do you play any part of that with Les? I've given up backing vocals. <laughs> my my seventy five year old voice is not quite as good as it was. Oh come on! <laughs> don't go using age as an excuse. I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> no, nah, the years have been kind. But uh, Leslie, I mean, I know you're a percussionist. Um, you know, I mean, that's kind of what you're known for. But uh, wasn't a, what an amazing voice you have yourself. Um, and, and I don't know that I heard that a whole lot previously, like on, you know, a lot of the cover work that you'd obviously been doing with a lot of the guys that make up the Soulmates, um, more so on um, this new double, uh, you know, that you have going on right now. A lot of vocal work. Uh, is that something that was, did you ever, I guess, tease the idea that maybe you would use other vocalists or was it kind of a mission of yours to be more of that vocal representation for this newest album? I mean, uh, first of all, I'm a songwriter. Uh, and uh, and as I was a young teenage boy and at the conservatory, no one wanted to play the drums uh, because all the boys wanted to be at the front. Uh, so I took the drums. So I said, okay. Uh, and you know, when, when you're 14 and you, you, know, you can't please the girls, so it, that's how it started. <laughs> and, and so I, I just said, I, I want to be a poet anyway, so I want to be a painter anyway. So, but but uh, my father was a great musician, and, and he said, uh, the talent is somehow something what you one should take seriously. So he was not letting me to be a poet and uh, and a painter, so I had, I had to go my way, uh, as a musician and and uh. And I never took seriously uh, my singing. I was just always singing my compositions for the singers. Mm. Uh, uh, so, so please sing it this way and this way. And, and and I was producing my life away. I worked for Collins, Chicka Khan, and and uh, you know uh, Lionel Richie, and 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 uh, you know Joseph uh, Cadison, and uh, many uh, you know Chicka Khan. Yeah, you've had a lot of great ones. Uh, and you know I was, I was producing my life away, and and I was I was singing my songs. Uh, or I was singing from the from the mixing console to the to the guys. Oh, please sing it this way and that way, and and try that. And then uh, all of a sudden, uh, uh, I, I'm, I, as the time you know was 
uh, going on and the years were passing by. I said, hey, I love to sing it. And now uh, today my, I really like uh, like to do it. And, and uh, it's just, uh, it's just thank you was coming up. And, uh, I, you know, my wife was coming home uh, with, with this, uh, this uh, impression and my Chinese friends were calling. Um, and, and, you know, the, the virus was, you know, spreading. And I said, okay, we have to say thank you right now. Way before uh, this came up. And, uh, and, um, and it was funny because normally we are all in, uh, surrounded by engineers and there's an analog recording and, and we are all gathering in the same room. And all of a sudden I had to do it, everything digitally. As I tell you, it was a fight with the technology. Uh, uh, and it was funny. As I, so I was um, sending over to Ian Anderson, who, who was, uh, uh, and then to John. And, and you know, we, we all, all had to overcome the technical challenge, number one. Uh, uh, to bring across this uh, message, and uh, and then I think we were just like like uh, uh, for children in the kindergarten, uh, Christmas and Easter and then a birthday at the same time that that we we somehow managed uh, to come over this digital uh, age and play together, um, uh, you know, over the pond, and uh, it was uh, wonderful to to bring this message across because it's so important that we. Uh, kind of uh, fine tune our value system, uh, we reset our value system actually, and and uh, we rethink what is socially relevant in, in life, and are these speculators who we call especially uh, uh, systematically relevant, or are uh, is the grocery clerk you know who's who's giving us the chance to 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 go to go on, and and. Uh, so and and it was I think it was important. I was very thankful to John, uh, you know, and Ian that immediately and that we went over to New York City and and uh, and Randy Bracker was playing in his basement. And normally we are hanging out in big studios like mine, but now everybody was kind of uh, um, uh, piecing it together and then went to Boston to, um, you know. So um, Steve Bailey, uh, he's the head of the basement department in uh, Berkeley, and so. It was a wonderful experience because we have to really say thank you now to the people who are uh, making this uh, whole thing kind of livable because uh, um, it's, it's a terrible challenge that we're going through. And uh, and we see the pictures from, from, from the States and, and we know what it means. Yeah, yeah. No. And uh, let me say thank you to both of you gentlemen. And again, everybody, we are here with Leslie Mendoki, John Hellowell, that make up part of the Mendoki Soulmates. Make sure you all go check them out. They got a brand new double album, although it's not new to Europe. It's going to be new in the United States, June 12th, Living in the Gap. It is awesome. And uh, they got Soulmates Weekly. Soulmates Weekly. I love those videos that you've been putting out there on YouTube. A um, lot of great content out there. So go out to the Mendoki Soulmates YouTube site. And again, you know, we'll have it in here. Um, but, uh, man, I, I, I just love the work that you're doing, but I love seeing the evolution of what you've done with the soulmates. Uh, it's really been awesomely refreshing and thank you so I, much. I, and I didn't know you could sing like that, you know, again, not that I'm surprised, but it's, it's, oh my gosh. I mean, the talent pool that you're pulling from, it's just, it is staggering. It really is. I mean, I talk to people that are part of quote unquote super groups you know you pull in some great musicians from different bands but my god you've got a you've got a whole symphony orchestra of greatness <laughs> very kind of you yes. thank you so much i mean this was a dream and uh you know this is just uh, uh it's also you know the reason why i escaped communism because i wanted to be a part of it you know this this is a this is a story i i just uh we all were looking to America, and uh, and uh, so was, actually uh, back then, as I was living be be behind the Iron Curtain, I never knew that Jet Total or Supertramp is British. I thought they are Americans. Uh, you know, okay. So, uh, so uh, then I really had to educate myself about it as as, as a young boy, as I came to the tunnel and escaped that. Uh, and it was, it was wonderful. I mean, I mean uh, yeah, I mean, you talk about oppression and dealing with, I mean, just ultimate tyranny 
You know, I know that what you were arrested like 17 times as a kid, yes. something. Oh my God. And it's just amazing that the, that the music that you're producing is the soulmates right now, because obviously when we, when you were doing, we say thank you. And I know you're continuing to do, we say thank you as we've been dealing with the COVID-19 coronavirus. Um, now in the United States, I'm sure you've all heard about it because, you know, it's spread, you know, across the globe in terms of, uh, you know, the incident we had over here, um, you know, regarding police brutality and, um, uh, you know, it's very unfortunate, but I mean, here you are, you know, uh, you know, we, we deal with discrimination over here to an extent and whatnot. And, you know, we all want equality. Everybody wants to be treated the same. Um, but you definitely know, you know what it's like firsthand to have, you know, an abuse of power you know, like dominate your life and the desire to flee from that. Um, do you see yourself incorporating that message into your work or, or has that already been something that you've been incorporating into your work? Uh, actually, I think that John would be the right uh, colleague of mine, a friend of mine, soulmate of mine to answer this question. Because okay. All right. For me, it's so much a part of my life, you know, th that uh, to stand up again against brutality and, uh, uh, you know, and this is so, so this longing for freedom, you know, this is so much uh, of my DNA, uh, you know, that, uh, yes, I, I believe that in every and each song I'm writing or, or performing or producing recording, uh, this has just always been a part of it. Uh, it's, a, it's a serious part of my life, uh, you know, to 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 see that um, we are all equal uh, and, and and to try to unite, you know, and, uh, and do everything against division. What what we can do, and and that's made me to be a refugee as a as a 22 years old, and um, and this this. Uh, a feeling for longing for freedom makes me to be a musician. So I just writes the songs, and John will prove it. That that uh, I think that the best songs of our lives uh, are not written by us. We are it's just our copyright. They're written by life, and we just wrote them down. Okay. Uh, we lived them through. Well, we have John back. We have John back. So maybe we could get his take on this, like what you're just talking about right now, Leslie. While you uh, stepped away there for a moment. Um, we were talking about, you know, some of the other very trying times that we're dealing with across the world, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, discrimination, oppression, um, abuse of power, um, you know, things of that nature, which Leslie himself has dealt with firsthand. And when we're talking about the songwriting, and I know it's very much a collaborative effort with all of you, um, you know, musicians, uh, what are some of your thoughts, you know, now that we're coming off, you know, Hopefully COVID's turning around, but now as COVID's turning around, now there's this whole new awakening, this new awareness to what's been going on. What are some of your thoughts on that? Well, it's not before time. Uh, the pretty bad situation. Black and white. So long. It needs to be, it really needs to be. We don't seem to have it as, as bad, but it, we, we're still... I've been fortunate, really, in living in kind of peace situations. Um, I can see a lot of angst in the world. There doesn't need to be. Really. Everyone would shape up and, and treat each other. Right. Yeah. No, that's absolutely the way it should be. And uh, I know the music that the soulmates are making right now is the kind of thing I think that uh, could be quite therapeutic. You know, well, to everyone. What's great about me, it, it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's a pleasure, but it, it was going out to give people, uh, get to people's heart. Exactly. That's, that's what we do. And, it, and and if you can do that for living, for your life, it, it, it's, a, it's a nice thing to be able to do. It's giving all the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I don't. I could keep you guys here all day. We could talk about this stuff all day long. And uh, I definitely, definitely want to have you guys back on as you know the Mendoki Soulmates uh, makes their way around the world. Hopefully, when uh, the virus is kind of 
flattened out a little bit and you guys can go out and perform live because I know that uh, the world would love to see you. Um, and again, everybody, we're talking with Leslie Mendoki and John Hellowell, Mendoki Soulmates. They've got their album June 12th, Living in the Gap, double album coming out. And so what's next? After the 12th, when it releases in the United States, obviously we're dealing with all these current events and handling things the best we can. Are you already working on new material actively as the Soulmates? Do you have plans for once you finally do get to go out and perform live? You know, uh, we won't be us. It won't be Soulmates if we wouldn't have plans. And, you know, uh, uh, we just, you know, these are just huge cases full of ideas. It's used uh, and, and it's a lot to say for us old rebels now, together with the young rebels, to unite the old rebels with the young rebels, to change the world to a better place with music. And, um, and of course, and as soon as we can travel again, uh, and we can travel in safety, uh, and, and, you know, we can, uh, uh, you know, our family and, and no one is in danger, we will travel again. And, and, uh, and some of the roads are getting safer again. And, and and as soon as we can enter the stage, probably if we are a little lucky, and 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 uh, and the situation is is, is uh, getting better and better, then then we will play on uh, uh, August the twenty second and a big uh, standalone open air in Budapest because there is already corona free, and if if the traveling is getting easy and 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 be getting under control, but we have to get under control as society, then we will uh, do and and be coming to the United States as soon as possible. Uh, and to play uh, and and uh, and do what we musicians love to do to see our audience. Awesome, awesome. Right. right on, right on. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to it. John Leslie, thank you so much for joining us on Rock Titan Live. It is truly my privilege and an honor to be able to host you, gentlemen. And I love what you're doing, and uh, can't wait. Can't wait to hear more. Can't wait to see more. It's been absolutely awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Yes. Uh, have a great one. And I wish everyone who was listening to it um, that from tomorrow on we are living in a better world. Yes, yes. Well, we thank you for doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody, I'm Scotty J on Rock Titan Live. Bye. We're out. <laughs>